All right. Hi, everyone. Um, so yeah, last meetup, I, after failing to port ESP5 to working, so we've got to hand it over to Damien for getting that working. I uh, put together a, an idea I've been having for a while to get some profiling for Async IO's applications. So I use Async IO for pretty much every project I do on MicroPython. It's fantastic. It meets all the needs for multitasking. But especially as programs get a bit bigger, you can run into issues with stuff slowing down. And if there's lots of tasks, it can get pretty tricky to figure out where the slowdown's coming from. Are you sharing with him? I am sharing my screen, but it's not showing on the big screen. Angle. That is what I'm using. Yeah, I've got it. Oh, it's just me. I don't know what's on. Yeah, okay. Uh, no, I see no, the screen. Doing... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Zoom's doing the recording. We'll see the right thing. Yeah, yeah so Async IO Profile or AIO Prof is what I've come up with. And I thought I'd run through a little quick demo of how I'd go about using it on a simple demo application as we'll got on screen here. So this demo application, single file, it's just starting up a couple of tasks to link a lead and watch the switch. So let's start that going. So import demo. I've got MP remote running to this little board here. That's it, there we are. And, and I'm using Jim's async guy REPL, which is amazing and fantastic. And everyone using async guy needs it. So we've got application running, see the blue lead blinking, that's this link function up and running, happy days. And we've got a REPL that we can keep working with while that application's running, which is even better. So, all right, linking works, that's good. Let's press the button. Ah, yep, we've got pressed on the REPL, that's what we thought, but my blue light's dead. Wow. Well, didn't really expect that. And my REPL's dead. Well, wow, something's wrong there. <laughs> okay, let's find out what's going on. Import AIO prof. So import the profiler and we can then inject it. So this will add its little hooks into async IO. Oh. And let it run for a little bit. Okay, AIO prof dot support. Right, yeah, here we can see what's been going on. We've got a blinker, we've got the watch, the switch, and a check I squared C, which is using a lot of time. Well, that's a bit odd, but that's not necessarily explaining the lockup in the switch at the moment. So if we now hold down the switch again, and yep, that's locked up again, close the REPL. Let's report again. Ah, that's changed things a lot. We've now got watch for switch. It suddenly jumped from using, oops. <laughs> wow, I've just got blue screen. So <laughs> that, that might actually get in the way of the demo a little bit. Okay. Okay, yep. All right, we can see everything. So back to where we're at. Where were we? The board running my import demo, it's the script here. We've got a multiple tasks. We are linking the blue light and waiting for a switch to get pressed. And that's where we're at. So just ready to queue up here. We've got the AI prop injecting it will enable it live. There's other ways you can enable it. Um, sort of at the start of a script, but inject is new and works in this case. It might break other applications. We'll find out later. Where we're at is showing a report of what's currently running. So yeah, uh, from boot, we've got link function and the check switch. And there, just to yeah, take a step back, the report is showing us here how many times that function has run and how long in milliseconds it's sort of accumulating runtime. You only get a granularity of one millisecond. So if a function runs in less than one millisecond, it'll keep adding zero to zero to zero. But in most cases, if your function's coming in under a millisecond in ASK at the moment, you can probably ignore it unless the count gets insane. 
And just to make it clear, Blink is running with a sleep of 300 milliseconds and Switch is running with 50 milliseconds delay. So hence the difference in camera. Mm -hmm. And if we check the report again, those numbers are going up. So they're running over time and the Switch eventually takes up some power or time. So as we're getting to, if I hold down my switch, switch and yep, as we saw before, I'm killing my light. So sad. Check what was going on on the report. And yeah, watch for switch. That count has jumped from four to 6,000 milliseconds. That's a lot of milliseconds. So, and yeah, this next function here with the switch, we start the I squared C scan, but the problem some probably somewhere in those milliseconds that we're seeing there and we'll go back and have a bit of a look at that function at least really narrow it down in the function and see down here yeah let's wait until the switch is released haha uh -huh. i forgot to await whoops so let's just restart that application All right, let's try again. Import demo. I can't hold this one. You the right lines. <laughs> Most of this is pretty. Set up and running. Reporting. Yeah. Good. Try holding down the button. Ah, light keeps blinking. Lovely. Excellent. We can keep pressing that. Happy days. Oh. Oh, now that light's gotten really slow. Why is that light blinking so slow? Something strange going on. All right. Check the report again. Ah. Ah. We've got lots of checkouts to tease. Radio. Yep, we're starting one of them every time the button's pressed. That's probably not really what was intended. And yeah, if we go back to look, those each of those tasks is taking a really long time. Why is each of them chewing up three, four seconds each since it was last run? We better have a look at that function too. And ah, uh, sleep zero. That's making that a very, very tight loop in between each of those R squared C scans, which take a real amount of time. Maybe if we slow that down a bit. And try to restart that. Copy okay. paste. Let's. Yeah, yeah. That looks right. So we're still doing multiple check I squared C's, lots of different sections around that to only start at once, but at least the time of it's getting a little bit better. An actual I squared C scan does take some time. And that's kind of the kicker with async IO that real functions do still take a real block in time. So this profile at least can give you some idea of how long these things are taking. So we run that function 11 times and it's taking a second. So it's about 100 milliseconds per scan. So you might want to then think about how many times you run that, how often you run that, and use this to sort of tune the, your functionality a little bit. So this is kind of where I'm trying to get to with this profile is can let you know if you've got some things that are looping way, way too fast and running a millions of times when you think they should only be running once or twice, but also tell you if you've got blocking functions that are, and how long it's taking in real time. That's awesome. One thing to keep in mind, this async IO profiler is hooking into the real async and adding some just Python wrapping in there to capture the timing. It will slow down your application. To have it running at all. Once you run that inject function, I think you should expect your application to slow down a little bit. How much? I'm not sure. Haven't profiled the profiler. 
but assuming that most of your other things should be fairly proportional, this should still give you some pretty good information about what's going on. Yeah, so this is currently pushed to its own repo. You can MIP install it straight from that repo with the single line and it's used, the demo is using AI REPL, which you can just MIP install as well. And this demo script as well as another basic example is included in there if anyone um, wants to have a look at how to use it. That's cool. And by all means, find some bugs. The way it's injecting <laughs> is probably a bit ugly, a bit wrong, and may break some usages of async IO, but the example script in there will show you the other way of just installing it straight into the application. You can just enable it at the start of your code, and then every task that's run after it started after enable has been run will be booked and profiled ready for writing reports. That's a, so just from here, run the example script that's included and it'll give you a bit of a rundown of a yeah, really simple case of how to use it. That's cool. Yeah. Hopefully that helps people. Get on top of why async IO might run slowly sometimes and help you narrow down. We've done some nasties. So I don't. Yeah, as little as possible. Yeah, I think it should be. Yeah, it's. It's not doing much allocation except that the, yeah, the the timing tracking behind the scenes is in a dictionary. So if you start a new task, it will add a new row to the dictionary, which will make it bigger. However, a task that's being run multiple times only will only be updating its value in that dictionary. So that is just integers. Or they might be in a tuple, but maybe recreating itself in a tuple, so creating a new tuple each time and adding that to the existing dictionary, that should still be the same amount of time each time. It's not growing over time. So unless that fun, that report table is getting longer, then I think the overhead per function call should be fairly consistent. Yeah, the, it's basically just each time an async function is being called, it's capturing the ticks MS beforehand and afterwards and adding one to the count and the ticks diff to the millisecond. So there's not much code being injected into async IO. Hopefully not too much overhead. Yeah, good right. done. Yeah, awesome. Oh, are you going to put that in MicroPython lib? Or so there is an open PR on MicroPython lib. It's for a, well, it's currently got an older version of this AIO profiler. Doesn't have the inject function because, yeah. well, I added functions as I was writing this yeah. demo. Um, <laughs> but yeah, assuming that this looks stable enough, I'll update that MR and yeah, submit it for inclusion in MicroPython lib. But I, I've done demos before of open PRs that never actually get finished enough to be suitable for merging. So I figured at least this time, <laughs> we use it in make it usable as is with some fairly straightforward instructions. With one caveat that uh, for the report to look any good on MP Remote, you do need the latest version of MP Remote, which was merged yesterday into master. So it's not on PyPy yet. Uh, the, the current version of Interim Boat on PyPy. Looks fine. Yeah, all these pretty little box, um, box layout on the report is Unicode and the, the current published version of Interim Remote doesn't handle that. But luckily, even before I'd asked, Jim and Damien had already fixed this problem. So I'm sure there'll be a new version of Interim Remote pushed upstream at the appropriate timing, which will have this included, or run MP remote directly from GitHub, MicroPython. It is going around. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. New stuff on new stuff. Yeah. Mm, enjoy. Thank you. Um, Peter sure. and Glenn both said that's fantastic. That's great. It's useful. Mm. I agree. Awesome.